I'm so excited that you guys are going to join me today for some fun with paper and ink. I am just trying to get my live stream to show up here. There we go. If you are joining me today, go ahead and pop in a note in the chat. Tell me where you're from, how your week is shaping up. It is a Monday, so happy Monday. I'm so glad that you guys are all here with me. And we're going to have a good time with all sorts of great stamp sets. And well, actually just one stamp set. And some stencils because you know I love stencils. All right. And yes, as we are joining here, don't forget to share out to social media, share out to all the groups that you belong to in Facebook and out on um, share out from YouTube. If you're out on YouTube, let people know that we are here and uh, having a great time with all new products today, creating some fun things and uh, get all sorts of people to uh, head on over and enjoy what we're doing. Of course, if you are selected as one of our sharers today, you will receive a $15 gift certificate from Alta New. So, hey, you know, we love to shop. We love Alta New. Our free gift certificate is like totally awesome. Get you some fun new stuff from one of our latest releases, right? All right. Hello, everybody. I've got Australia. We've got Canada. We've got the United States. People are sharing it up. Happy Monday, everybody. I'm Nicole Watt, and I'm a Alta New educator and design team member on the video design team. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. If you love what I'm doing here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst all of your crafty friends. If you love what I'm doing personally, I would love to have you follow me on YouTube and on Instagram at Pixel Mavens Retreat. I'm providing all sorts of great content all the time all to new and otherwise. Anyway, glad you guys are here. Let's take a look at what we're going to be working with today. All right. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Stand by. I need to change my screen a little bit here. Pop a few things out of the way. I did not, uh, I totally forgot to set up my overhead and that's kind of screwing everything up. Hey, there we go. Easy peasy. I like to bump it down just a hair so we don't get too much glare. Beautiful. Okay. Hey, we are back in business. So today, if you saw the little um, title of today's live, I'm going to be using the book engravings stamp set. This came out last month, I think it was recently. And we're going to use this today. I have some of it already set up in my MISTI so you can see that there's a couple pieces missing. This is a building or layering stamp set. You've got outline images, which is really great. You can use them on their own and do some really cool things, or you can add in the layers and create some beautiful depth and dimension. So book engravings, like I love this stamp set because it is kind of vintagey, right? And so I wanted to show you how to do some vintage techniques to make it look like you really pulled these out of a book. So um, we're going to do some really cool techniques today with some stencils and with um, with the stamp set. So I've got this stamp set out here. I've got the scallop builder stencil. I've got liquid marble. I've got the color block triangle. I've got on the plus side. Love stencils. You know I love stencils. Um, and we're going to create some really fun things. So uh, somebody was just asking about my YouTube channel. It's Pixel Mavens Retreat. Um, actually, I think if you look up Nicole Watt with no S, W-A-T-T, -T, um, you'll be able to find it there too. Um, so anyway, this is um, these are a couple of projects that I recently made. And you'll see these in an upcoming Sketch Starters video. Um, but we're going to do some things similar to this today. And I wanted to show you guys what some finished projects look like to get started here. So as we're getting started, again, don't forget to share out today's video while we're live so you can qualify for our $15 gift certificate giveaway. Don't forget to give a shout out to Joanna. She's behind the badge today and she's already popping up all of our links 
for all the products. If you miss them along the way, you can scroll back up to the top and grab one, or she'll post them um, periodically as I'm talking about them. So don't sweat it. If you miss something along the way, though, of course, do pop out a question. I will try to answer as many as I can, and Joanna will hit the rest of them. All right, so let's pop down to the hands. Okay, guys, so we're going to do some really fun, gorgeous, monochrome looking flowers. All right, and we're going to do some really cool backgrounds. Here's a couple of them. This is easier than it looks, guys. All right, so let's um, start with the background since I have like all of my blenders out and everything. And I've got four pieces of cardstock here. I thought we'd work up four different looks. Hello, everybody. So glad you're joining me. I've got four stencils too. It's so funny how that works. Okay, so this is going to give you an idea that you can do this with any stencil. Um, it works really nice with the pattern stencils because think about like an old book, like the inside covers of those old books, how you would see like those really beautiful monochrome kind of patterns. Sometimes it would be maybe a marbly look. Sometimes it would be a... Um, Sometimes it would be a geometric, sometimes it would be a floral, but um, this is kind of what I was going for with these guys, okay? So I've got all sorts of inks over here. Let me show you what I've got. I've got the Sweet Dreams set. I've got the Red Cosmos set. This set here is the Rock Collection set, and then we've got Fall Harvest on the end here, okay? Look at how gorgeous these look together. Would you ever think to put like Fall Harvest with your Sweet Dreams? Like, they're gonna be amazing, all right? And the red and the yellow looks gorgeous together. And then of course, the um, the grays. Um, this is a really nice option for gray because it's more of a um, warm gray. It's kind of a, a brown gray almost. And I really, really like that a lot. Okay, so let's see, I already have... We'll start with on the plus side. Okay. And I do like to use these little double sticky squares. These are called um, sticky sheets. They're made by Sizzix. Altenew does not have anything like this, but um, what it is is just a little temporary um, piece of um, paper that it's got the adhesive on both sides and I really like it for sticking down like a piece of cardstock when I'm going to do some stenciling especially if I'm going to do the whole panel and I already have it cut down so then I just need to um, adhere my stencil down now with a geometric if you already have your cardstock cut down you want to make sure that you are doing you're getting everything kind of even right so this is the opportunity to really make your card look super professional. Yeah, Jen, so I label my ink cubes. Some of them I have labeled and some of them I don't. So originally I was labeling them with this like SD1, SD2 for um, like sweet dreams. So I have SD1 through four. Um, now that we've got these beautiful labels for these, I'm, I'm slowly I'm making additional labels to put on the side here with the full name because sometimes I don't remember what SD stands for and uh, it would be easier if it just said Sweet Dreams 1, etc. So I'm working on getting some labels on the side of these um, for that as well. All right, so here's the really cool technique. You only really need one color to do this. So I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take Aqualicious in this case, right? And in, in the samples that I have, I've used um, do drops, but I want to do something just a hair darker to show you something different. All right, so I've got my large blending tool. And I'm going to get these pluses, pluses in place. All right, and I've got inky fingers already. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea, Rosie. Um, she uses one of her Cricut mats for ink blending. That's a really great idea. I would be worried about getting like the ink on the like the outside of the mat. Do you wash it afterwards? Because that's a really great idea. I'd love to share that with people. Okay, so I've got my stencil done here. This looks beautiful, right? However, we're going for vintage and vintage 
isn't really like white doesn't come to mind when I think vintage right so um, I'm going to do something more to this but I'm not going to use any other color ink I'm going to continue using my aqualicious and my ink blending tool here I'm going to go over the same panel lightly watch what happens so it's akin to doing this stenciling on colored cardstock. However, if you don't have colored cardstock in the right hue, then what are you going to do? This is what you're going to do. You're going to put your stencil on there first, get it nice and dark, or however dark you want it. And then you're going to go over it in the same color over the whole panel and take off that white edge. Look how easy this is. So now you've got a beautiful tone on tone panel, right? And it looks super vintage, like it came from a, the inside of a book, right? That's kind of what I'm going for today. That pattern that you find on the inside of old books, like, can you smell it? The smell of old books, like, I love that smell, all right? So cool, right? So let's try another one. Yay, let's try another one. Okay, and I'm going to go through like all the different colors here so we see what we've got going on. All right, so let's move on to our Red Cosmos. And in my sample, I used... Oh, I haven't done one in this yet. Um, let's do Rouge because blush gets a little light. Okay, and I will do this... I'm going to get this dry, otherwise nothing's going to stick to it. <laughs> All right, so in our talk about, okay, no ink transfer issues. That's really good to know. Thank you, Rosie. I have an extra sheet, so I might just have to try that. Love it. The crafting community is so full of kind and caring and sharing people. Love it. Okay, so here is the color block triangle. Love this one. Um, Sue, don't worry, we're gonna get to the marble one, I promise. All right. So doing actually they're doing this one in a different direction, which is fine. I've got my red blending tool and I'm using Rouge from the Red Cosmos family. Same process, right? You're gonna get addicted to these and you're gonna have a ton of background. <laughs> Which, hey, that's okay. Now, hey, did you notice that I didn't put down any um, tape? This happens to have some uh, spray adhesive on the back of it. So I don't have to worry about it picking up. <laughs> Rosie, you're hilarious. Yes. Started using them with everything. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, Amy, um, so the effect of inking after inking the stencil it's just it's so nice it makes it a much more toned down look so even if you're not going for vintage if you want something a little bit more toned down this is a great way to accomplish that all right hope you all had a wonderful weekend we had gorgeous weather here in the middle of the united states and so i took advantage of that time to do some gardening and get get some of the weeding and things done and the bushes trimmed back and all that stuff before it gets really hot all right so look I've got my beautiful panel here done in rouge all right and I'm going to just go over it again with rouge without the stencil we're going to lighten this up well tone it down all right thank you everyone for sharing love to get all sorts of participation in our live streams it's monday right you know i want to take a break already from having to think about work and do work like things i know some of you might already be home from work from the day want to unwind a little bit some of you down down under are it's super early for you getting ready to start your day if you're out there Maybe you'll catch us later on the live on a rebroadcast, huh? All right. So there we go. This is Rouge. Tone on tone. Gorgeous. 
All right, so you saw how it looked with the white in there, and now look at it with the rouge all across. Nice and subtle, really blends well together. All right. Let's do another one. All right, Sue, so this one's for you. Sue, so do you want me to do this? Um, ah, yeah, I'm going to do this one in, um, in the grays because the next one is the scallop builder, and I want to do that one in yellow. Yeah. All right. Next. Yes, this is the liquid marble stencil. You can use it either way. All right, this does not have any adhesive on it, so I need to tape it down. Now, working with one of these is sometimes a little tricky. These little pieces here like to flip up and things like that, so we're going to have to maybe go a little slower. That's okay. I'm just going to tape it down really, really well. I've got all sorts of these little bits of tape on the side of my workspace here, left over from die cutting. So some of them actually aren't really sticking well. I think this one probably needs some better pieces. Because I really don't want this to move. All right. So tape overload. <laughs> okay. We've got rock collection here. I'm going to go again for the second one in. I'm going to do um, this in evening gray. Um, the moon rock looks really nice. Here's, um, here's moon rock. But I'm going to do something a little lighter. I'll do evening gray this time. All right. Yet another ink blending tool. Now, I know I get this question a lot. How many ink blending tools do you have, Nicole? I have 10. <laughs> I know exactly how many I have. I have 10. Um, so I have red, orange, well, red, pink, orange. And why are you popping up on me here? Oh, because it got pulled up there. There we go. Um, and then I've got, so red, pink, orange, yellow. I don't know why this got funky. Stand by for technical difficulties. Oh, there we go. And then I've got green, green, blue, or blue, green, whatever you want to call it. Blue, purple, blacks and grays, and then browns. So 10. I generally don't wash them in between. I, If I feel like they might have a lot of extra ink on them, I go ahead and wipe them off on a paper towel first until I get most of the ink off. All right. Um, so underneath, I've got these little, they're called uh, sticky sheets um, by Sizzix. And that's what's holding the paper down underneath. If I didn't have those, um, someone suggested using a uh, like an old sheet from their Cricut or, um, you know, those kinds of like adhesive sheets. Um, you could also just put some temporary tape on the back, temporary adhesive. And that works well, too. Um, this stencil is called the Liquid Marble Stencil. All right, and as you can see, this one's a little more difficult to work with just because you don't want these little bits to come popping up. Now, I could add um, adhesive spray to my stencil, but I've chosen not to because sometimes I like to use the other side. All right, so huh, look at all these on here. Let's see. Yes, this is a liquid marble stencil. So here we go. This is our first pass at it. I'm going to take some of these off. Not all. There we go. All right, now here's the cool thing. Like I've got a little bit of an area here where the stencil shifted a little bit, but because we're gonna do this tone on tone, I'm gonna cover that right up. So, and again, this color that I'm using right now is evening gray. And again, this gives this kind of a look of like when you open up an old book and you would see all that beautiful patterned paper on the inside. 
it kind of gives it that look. Right. Beautiful. All right, so there's three. Let's do one more. And then we'll move on to some flowers. Woo. All right, so the last one I've got, I've got my Fall Harvest ink set. And we're going to use the Scallop Builder stencil. Now this one will actually do more than what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use the one, one pass at this. You can shift it downward and add in more rainbows if you want. But I'm not going to do that. And you know why this isn't sticking? It's because there's ink around the edges and it doesn't want to stick to this. All right, so I guess if you used one of those um, mats from your uh, machine, from your electronic cutting machine, then this would actually stick around the edges too. That would be kind of nice. You guys have me inspired to give that a try for sure. <laughs> okay, scallop builder. A couple of pieces on here. And for this one, we will do uh let's do pumpkin pie all right uh yes yeah, spray adhesive does kind of come off of stencils um sometimes it does leave a bit of a residue I, if i'm careful about it i can actually get the spray adhesive to work after a couple of washings if i'm careful about how i wash the back um, i think you would really have to soak it pretty good in order to get all of the residue off. All right, so I'm doing just, you know, solid projects here. Of course, you can do all sorts of creative things with stencils. And if you haven't taken it yet, I do have an Alta New Academy class. It is called Stencils Unleashed. We do not do this technique in that class but we do all sorts of other ones that are really, really awesome. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Beautiful. And again, we'll just take that same pumpkin pie and bring that right over top to tone this down. All right, so any stencils you have in your kit at home will work for this uh, for this technique. All right, done with that. Clean off my area here. Okay, so let's see what we've got. I had some that I made up earlier. So we've got these and then the ones that i just made with you guys we did another plus side one and then i did the marble there we go fun oh my gosh aren't these awesome okay so i'm going to set these aside if you missed this technique rewind and watch the beginning now we're going to do some flowers that i think you're going to love too okay so this is as I mentioned at the top of today's class, the book engravings stamp and die set. And there is actually a, um, a mask set for this as well. Um, but we're just going to use the stamps and dies today. Okay. And I've got them already partially set up for you here. Okay. So I've got, um, I've got the outlines done already. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? I figured I could save us some time today by doing the outlines for us. Now, I'm gonna create some very similar monochrome looking um, results here, all right? Kind of like this one here or like this one, all right? They look very book engraving-ish, all right? If you do this monochrome look. So let's kind of go through our same uh, colors again. Um, instead, okay, so we did Aqualicious for the background, and I have a Dewdrops background. Let's do Teal Cave on one of these. 
Um, okay, so with these guys, I would definitely use your um, stamp conditioner. Even if you've conditioned these before, you get hand oils on them. They get cleaned with soap and water or whatever other um, formula you're using for cleaning off your stamps. I always come back and use my stamp conditioner. This is a, an eraser made by Alta New. And as you can see, mine has been used quite a lot. I think I have another little piece hanging out in my, my bin over there. Um, they start off a little bit longer, of course. And they break up a little bit as you use them lovingly, right? So I like to make sure that these guys are really nice and um, milky looking. All right. This is what is going to allow the ink to sit on here and not beat up as much as it would if you didn't do this process. All right, so as you see, while I'm putting this ink on here, it's not beating up. So the first time I use a stamp set, I use the conditioning eraser a little more vigorously. And a lot of times I have to wash my stamps off after that because there's like a lot of little bits from the stamp uh, from the eraser on there. Right. But after I have done that once, then the next times I just do a little, a little more lightly and it works up just fine. OK, so make sure I'm in there. Good. All right. So watch as long as your ink is pretty juicy and you have done your um, stamp conditioning, you should only have to stamp once. All right. Look at how nice the coverage is on that. I could stamp it again if I wanted to, but I think this looks okay. All right, so that works out pretty well. Now look, I've got this set up to just flip it over. We can do another color. Technically, usually I wipe this off and I will recondition. I think I'll try to forego it this time. All right, so let's do, um, we're gonna do crimson for these set. Now I don't know how many of these we're going to get to cutting out and whatever, but I just wanted to show you guys it works for all colors. You can do this technique with just about any layering stamp set. What's unique about this set is that there's a lot of white left over, which you're going to see in a minute here. Oops, hang on a second. All right, so now I have some in crimson, and I'm actually going to do those again. I've been using my crimson ink a lot lately, so it could probably use a re-inking. The little cubes need ink more often, so don't be afraid to re-ink. There we go. All right, so now I have some blue flowers, some red flowers. Um, let's do all the colors first, then we'll come back and do the detail. Those are all going to be the same, believe it or not. All right, next color. These are going to be super monochrome. We'll do these all in the rock collection. So I will do um, moon rock for these guys. Okay. So are you guys cube users or are you full size ink pad users? I started off with the cubes myself because of storage. And then I did get some sets in full size, but I find that even though, yes, it takes longer to stamp like this, um, sometimes you have more control over it than you do. Um, Deborah, you should just be able to rewind your video at the bottom. Hover your um, hover your cursor or your hand over the um, over the video and just swipe back or use your cursor if you're on a computer to rewind. I know a lot of people when they show up a little late, um, they get the uh, especially on YouTube if that's where you are. Um, we'll play it in um, double speed <laughs> so that you can catch up on everything and. Um, then eventually you're live. All right, so this is Moon Rock. All right. And then on the last set here, we will do uh, Sicilian Am, uh, no, not Sicilian Am, Yellow Ochre. 
Oh, that's a girl. Because the nice thing about the squares is that you don't get extra all over the place. It stays pretty localized. Hmm. Yep, Deborah, I don't know. Don't know what to tell you. You'll have to catch the replay in a little bit, and then you'll be able to fast forward to the part you need. Right. Ooh, these yellow and gray flowers look really pretty together, don't they? All right, so the last little bit on these, the, the leaves do not have any more detail. So look at all that white that is on there, right? We're going to address that in a minute, okay? Um, let me just kind of pull this off. All right, so let me flip this over. For all of the second layer, I'm going to do, um, well, on the gray ones, I'll do lava rock. On the rest of them, I'll probably do moon rock. All right, and this is going to make... These look really, really pretty. Okay, so this is just a really, you know, tone on tone on tone with the lava rock. Here. All right. So just going to get a little bit of a darker shade in there. That's going to look really, really pretty. But here, here's what's going to look really gorgeous. I'm going to keep using lava rock, I think. So I'm going to do lava rock on all of these colored ones instead of picking up one of the darker shades from their color family. All right, and they look gorgeous. I love the way that looks. This one doesn't seem to be quite lined up. We'll deal with it later. All right, next we're going to go for red. Let me just see. Yeah, I must have stamped this sheet a little different. So it looks like it should line up. All right, so still lava rock on our crimson. All right, look what that does. It's a really, really muted red. Okay, so instead of being a different shade of red, it is a different um, tone. All right, because it's got the gray on top. Last one. Woo. And then we're done with all of our stamping. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we're done with our Misty as well. Yay. Okay. So, check those out. They look gorgeous. Here's a problem. If I die cut these guys out and I start putting them on top of these, what's going to pop? The white is going to pop. Look at all that white on there. Okay. So, I lied. We're not really done with the ink yet. What we are going to do is the same technique that we did with the stencils. We're just going to do it with our flowers now. Okay. So I used um, Sicilian Amber on this. I'm just going to come back with butternut and my yellow blending tool and go right over this whole section. All right, and so now I've filled in all of the white with butternut. And that's toned them down significantly, right? And then on this one, I will pull out um, the morning frost. Now I could use the same color and try to do it nice and light, but 
um, you can also use the lightest color in the family to accomplish this same look. All right, so morning frost with whatever was left over on my blender. This one actually I might need to level up. Morning frost might not be dark enough. Yeah, I feel like I want some faster results here, and I think morning frost needs a little ink refill. So I'm going to move up to evening gray. There we go. All right, so now let's compare the two. We have our bright white ones here, and we have some muted ones here now that I've put that ink over the top. These look pretty vintage, right? These look kind of vintage. So adding just that little bit of ink blending over there to tone down that white helps a whole ton. Okay, so let's finish these last two. We'll do... Blush works really well um, with this. I'm going to do, yeah, I'll do blush. So, yeah. Poor bank account, you want all the things. But remember, these techniques can be used on products you already have. So this can really breathe life into a stamp set that you already have that you'd really like to try this technique on. If it's the kind of stamp set, a layering stamp that has like all the filled in layers, um, just don't use all the layers, only use some of them to get the same result. And of course, stencils are stencils are stencils. Give this technique a try with anything that you have. All right, so huh, my blush needs to be re-inked too. I've been using these colors a lot this month, so that would be why. All right, so last one, we used a teal cave on this. I'm gonna go back with dew drops. That one came together quick. All right. So there we go. Now we've got some gorgeous flowers. We've got some gorgeous backgrounds. I did pre-stamp some sentiments. These all came from the book engravings stamp set, the hello and the thank you. So we can use those. I've got some sequins here. Let's put some together. Okay. I'm going to let these dry for just a minute and then um, do some die cutting as I need it because I've got a whole pile of flowers here. All right, let's see what I have. So this was a fail, I think. I tried to do um, like moon rock or evening gray or something over the red and I really wasn't excited with the way that turned out. So um, that's a discard pile <laughs> for sure. All right. So let's talk flower arranging. I know there's always little questions about flower arranging, right? Um, let's start with on the plus side. All right, so should I use red and blue or should I use yellow and blue? Let me know. Quick, pop in the comments. Let me know. All right, so while we're waiting for some people to chime in, red or yellow, here's a nice thing. I've got my Altenew mat here. 
it's got my A2 size card right here and right here. So I can do a landscape or I can do a, a, a landscape or a portrait. All right, so let's say we want to do this guy in um, landscape. So yellow, yellow, and blue, red and blue, yellow, yellow, yellow. Yellow seems to be winning out. I think we're going to do yellow. Okay, great. Here's what I've got. I've got a couple of blooms still, and I've got a whole bunch of leaves. Flower design doesn't need to be too difficult. All right, place your projects down first. So this triple leaf here is really awesome. I could do a triple leaf and a, and a bud and be done. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so triple leaf and a bud. How simple is that? There's not a, I don't even have it popped up or anything. They're just glued right on each other. That's all you need. All right, that looks absolutely stunning. Okay, I have it grounded with a sentiment strip here and a couple of sequins. And that really just pulls the whole thing together. All right, so if you want to do more, you can, of course, do more. You want to add in more leaves to make this a more full looking project. Then you're going to want to start popping things up. So I could do a whole bunch of leaves on this one and pop this guy up a little bit here. I can even take my second flower and move it out like that. All right, so I really like the way this is going. If I left it flat like this, it would be like way too much. So what I'm going to do is pull these guys out and then glue these down. So um, I um, sometimes I do the um, press and seal technique where you grab it all with your press and seal and then you pop it up or you do your thing with it. It keeps it all together, which is really nice. Sometimes I just lift up layers and then pick up piece by piece and glue them back in. All right, and then I'm gonna add this flower in also on the same base level. So what I've done here is created kind of a frame for my main flower and leaf to, to go on to. All right, so let's see where these guys are gonna go. I think it's gonna be like that. So let's glue the element together. All right. So then this is going to get popped up. So let me remove that for a second. Yes, I have had, had the press and seal rip my paper and it's devastating when that happens. So maybe that's sometimes why I don't do that. Um, okay, so I've got some sentiments here. I stamped them on both sides because I wasn't sure like which side I would be using it on. <laughs> So I'll pop this guy here. I think, I think if I do something like that it would work or I think that's even better. So let's do that. All right, so remember this guy still isn't glued down. This is all gonna get popped up. Whoa. My glue decided to be difficult. Stand by. Sometimes when it gets a, um, if you like this particular liquid glue, sometimes when it gets a goober in it, it just starts to seep like this all the time. And that is really, really frustrating. Come on. All right, we'll see if I can get that to recover. So I certainly don't need that much glue. All right, so I'm going to use my little pluses here to kind of keep everything in line. I'm going to pop my flower in place where I want that to go. All right, and then I've got this little extra bit here. I can just stamp it. Don't even need to use scissors. Just rip it off. <laughs> All right, so this is going to get popped up. Say so I even want this to go a little closer. Yeah, that's even better. All right, so I'm going to put some double-sided 
foamy adhesive and have you seen the new Alta new roll o foam this thing is epic if i ever have a little piece left over i just stick it on the side here and that works out really well now you can um you can rip this it does rip apart it's a little plasticky so it doesn't always rip as nicely maybe as you might like it to I find if I just do a nice firm tear, I can get it to rip up. And it's super, super sticky. Super sticky. All right, so once it's down, it's kind of down. All right, so like this is not, this piece I don't think is really gonna work here. Oh, it is, there. All right, so again, I got my little hello, and that's going to stay in line with our little plus signs. We want to make sure that that's nice and level. There. So now, in this particular arrangement, I've got all of these leaves and flowers in the background, and then I've got this next piece here popped up to be a little bit more of a focal point. All right, so if I want to... See, look at my glue. It's being naughty. Add some sequins on here. A container. These I will actually put on the leaves. Really kind of bring everything together. So let's do like something like maybe something like this all right so you see how i've got that on the leaf there i think that looks really nice bring on the bling yes beverly absolutely um, i really think a little bit of bling or you know some um, enamel dots Bling for the boys, if you will, um, really does something to elevate a card. Every once in a while, I go without. All right. But this is kind of my signature. I always do, almost always, I should say, do a tight triangle. So I've got one, two, three, very tight triangle. All right. And that is the antique gold sequence. Gorgeous, right? Like came out of the pages of the book. Yeah, these are the um, antique gold sequins. I've got the um, white ones too, which we're gonna use in a minute here. All right. So there we go. Okay, let's move on to, I think we've got time. We've got time for one more, maybe two. I think we wanted, we wanna do the marble, don't we guys? Everybody wanted to see the marble. I'm gonna die cut the blue ones out. I think these are gonna be stuck. So yeah, um, who was that? Cece, um, was that Cece that pointed out um, that it's got the label name on there. So it's really nice when you've got it on the back of your element, you can tell whether you've taken the backing off or not. You know, there's some out there that have just a plain white backing on them and you can't tell if it's, uh, if you've removed the backing or not. And then you try to stick it down. You're like, why isn't this sticking? Because the backing is still on it. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can cut all these out at once. <laughs> all right, so obviously I'm not going to put this through my um, mini blossom because I've got this arranged a little differently. It won't fit through the mini blossom this way. However, if you only have the mini blossom you can definitely cut these guys up to um, get them to go through the mini blossom without any problem all right so let me run this through my die cut machine real quick Oh, 
All right. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, no, it is um, post-it tape, 3M post-it tape. It just happens to be like super neon yellow. All right, guys. Here we go. So this one I will do in portrait. And again, leaf, trio, flower, done. You could be totally finished with it just like this. I mean, look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so for this one, let's do something more like along the lines of that. And then maybe, maybe just that. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so I'm going to glue these two guys together. Uh, yes, Rhonda, I believe you can. Of course, Amazon will have it too. All right, so that's how we're going to do that. Yeah, I like it. All right, so I'm going to glue these guys down to the card base. Um, okay, so, um, yes, yeah, see, this base here is something custom that we created earlier in the broadcast. So go ahead and check out the beginning of today's video. I created all these backgrounds using different, um, different stencils. Yeah, it does kind of look like waves. I really, really like it. I've done a lot of different things with this particular stencil. Okay, so these guys are going to join up here. I could stick in, yeah, let's do that. We're gonna go, we're putting them all in. <laughs> all right, so this is gonna go here. These are gonna go there. All right, so on this here, of course I will some more of my big foam tape. Oh, I had a little piece here too. I like to take the foam tape and stick it across the seams. So putting it across where all of them meet up so that way it kind of helps stick everything together. It works really well that way. Beverly, you are just super excited about everything today. <laughs> Thank you for all the high fives. All right. Yeah, you could do ocean scenes with that. You're really, really pretty. Okay, so where am I going to put my sentiment? I've got a, maybe not any of the right color. This is not the right color. Pink would be okay. I think I'm going to go just for this kind of taupey color because that actually matches quite nicely. I could do something like that. That would be kind of interesting, but I don't think I will. Let's do... that. I might just snip the sentiment, not even do it as a strip. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so this guy. Yeah, so doesn't this look gorgeous together? This is the Rock Collection inks and the um, Sweet Dreams inks together. They are a great combo for sure. All right, guys, so we are, we got like five more minutes. I might be able to eke out one more card for you. We've got to put some bling on this one first, though. And um, don't forget to share out in the last few minutes here to be eligible for our giveaway. Two, two, two. 
All right, so these are the satin white ones. This is going to look really pretty. Okay, so again, I really like that we've got three sizes in here. We've got large and small and medium. And I think we'll do it kind of like this. Yeah, that'll look great. So these guys, I mean, yeah, I could add the gold on here. That would really add a punch. This is really going to add a subtleness to the whole thing. All right, so here we go. Look at that. Yes. Gorgeous. I used all of the flowers and leaves from that particular set. Beautiful. All right. Well, hey, guys. Actually, we're about four minutes to the end of today, and I think that's going to be it because I want to show you guys everything that we did. In case you joined us late, you can catch a recap of all of the beautiful things that we did. All right. Check it out. We made some beautiful backgrounds, tone on tone backgrounds, using one color of ink on each of these, create some beautiful tone on tone backgrounds, right? Gorgeous. And then we did the same thing with the flowers. We did some tone on tone and then we blended over to get rid of all of that harsh white to make these beautiful cards. And these are the samples that I had before. We talked a little bit about arranging flowers. All those great things here. You know what? We've got this one red one here. I really feel compelled to do this. I'm going to show you how quick this is. I need that. Um, actually, here, I'm going to do the two little ones together. I've got because I've got three here. I'm going to do that. All right, so watch how quickly this happens. One. All right, I've got these little buds here. I'm going to do one down like so. I'm going to pop in sentiment. All right, I'm going to take my other bud here. Hey, look, I have a piece of foam. There, <laughs> I did another one. <laughs> Excellent, right, guys? Oh, my goodness. And poof, like that, an hour has gone by. And we have created all of these amazing things and you have inspiration for the rest of the week. So I hope you guys give this technique a try. If you do, please tag me, hashtag Pixel Mavens Retreat. Uh, you can also find me out on the Alta New fan group. If you're not a part of that group on Facebook, I encourage you to check it out. That is a bunch of Alta New loving crafters and we're always sharing projects and inspiration out there. So you can share your projects there as well. So I am so glad that you guys joined me today. I hope that you have inspiration for the rest of the week now and that you get some time to craft in your craft space. I will be back. Um, I think I've got one more live. No, I guess we're going into next month already. So I have a few lives next month. I will see you then. If I don't see you before on my channels, I would love to have you over there as well. So thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting.